So, folks, we kindly ask parents to be aware that this segment may not be suitable for all audiences and parental discretion is advised. I'm now joined by Dr. Tasha Cook, and we'll be addressing the effects of erectile dysfunction and the significance of understanding it as a first step uh, towards seeking treatment. Dr. Cook, uh, I think I could say my good friend, um, she's the granddaughter of the uh, former Governor General, Sir Howard Cook, and an outstanding national field hockey player. Great to see you. Good morning and welcome to Smile. How are you? Good. I'm fine. Good morning, Neville, and good morning, viewers. Yeah. What is erectile dysfunction? So erectile dysfunction refers to the inability to attain or maintain an erection that's satisfactory enough for sexual activity. Um, what causes it? So, you know, there are, there are a number of causes and sometimes it's even multifactorial. Common things include cardiovascular disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. It may occur after prostate surgery. Uh, in, our, in our population, sickle cell disease is common and our young patient, male patients may develop something called priapism and recurrent episodes of priapism can result in erectile dysfunction. So can you imagine a young male having erectile dysfunction? Quite, could be quite devastating. Other things include uh, Peyronie's disease, which is the fibrous scar tissue that occurs in the penis, and that can also be treated. That's, um, that can also lead to erectile dysfunction. What about age? Anything age. to do with it? Well, you know, the thing about it is that um, some of these lifestyle diseases, such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure, they occur as you get older. Yeah. So it's directly related to these conditions. Yeah. But you're really here to tell us that you can um, fix that. <laughs> For, for want of a better word, you could <laughs> you could help people who are in. And by the way, before I go there, how prevalent is it? Oh, very common. You know, never. Very is, common. Very common. In Jamaica, fifty percent of men over fifty have erectile dysfunction. That's worldwide or in Jamaica? Really? That's worldwide. Those are worldwide, and I'll tell you. Fifty percent. Yes. So you look to your right, and you look to your left, and it's You're likely probably. that somebody has erectile dysfunction. So I mean. Like, for example, for diabetics, one in every two diabetics has erectile dysfunction. So it's quite common. And I mean, I'll just take this opportunity just to reassure men that if you have symptoms of erectile dysfunction, you're not alone. You know, um, chances are your neighbor, your relative also has it. So the important thing is just to seek help. Yep. Um, so fix probably was not the, the most appropriate word, but you can help. I can help. And you do what? Okay, so um, for the treatment of erectile dysfunction, right? Like with everything in medicine, we usually start as a, use a conservative approach. So if you can identify any predisposing conditions that can cause erectile dysfunction, you want to try and address those. So that, mean, that would mean controlling the high blood pressure, addressing cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. And then, you know, the first line of treatment is usually to start with oral medications. And you can also have injections that are um, into the penis. However, we know that not all patients are going to respond, and some will respond initially, but then after a while, they no longer have satisfactory benefits. Mm -hmm. So the next step would be to, um, to suggest to those patients that they could have a penile prosthesis, and there are different types. We have a semi-rigid penile prosthesis, as well as a inflatable penile prosthesis, or the three-piece device. So let's start with the semi-rigid penile prosthesis. What does this entail? It has, it's, com it's composed of two rods which are placed in the penis. So the rods are rigid. And when you're ready to have sexual intercourse, you basically just straighten the rods and you can... Um, and you do that by yourself. And you can do that by yourself and it's very easy, right? And when you're finished, you just bend the penis in a discretionary way and, and you can conceal it. And this is really a very good option for patients that don't have good manual dexterity. Their hands, their, you know, their, their fingers are not very strong or they may have a little bit of arthritis. So it's easy and very convenient to That's use. That's an operation? Okay, yes. Because a penile, a penile prosthesis is really a medical device that's surgically placed in the penis. Okay. Right. And this is, of course, to help men who have um, erectile dysfunction, who are no longer able to, um, they don't, oral medication doesn't help them, or they're not able to take these medications because of the side effects, 
or they may have some other medical problems that would prevent them from taking those medications or injections. You mentioned side effects because I read somewhere that um, some medication for other um, illnesses or diseases, whatever, can cause uh, erectile dysfunction. Is right. That, so is medications so? is also another um, another cause of erectile dysfunctions, right? I mean, we don't want to go yeah. isolate yeah. Or, or, or highlighting anyone yeah. in particular, but yeah. yes, suffice to say that yes, medications can cause this. But the good thing about it is that if you're not able to take these medications, then there are options. So as we were saying before, the yeah. malleable device, and then the other device that we could use is a three-piece prosthesis, or the inflatable. And this most closely resembles the natural physiological erection. So again, it's a, a, a medical device that's placed and all the components are placed within the, um, the patient, right? And um, it consists of two rods which are placed in the penis. There's a small pump which is in the scrotum and there's a fluid filled reservoir that's right in the pelvis. And when they're ready for sexual intercourse, they basically will just reach down to the scrotum, they'll press it, and then they'll have the erection. The great thing about this is that they're able to control the strength of the erection. They're able, they're able to have an erection at the time. They can show up at the moment. They don't have to worry about it failing. They don't have to worry about how long it's going to last because guess what? The erection doesn't go down until you press the release, the release pump. Whoa. So, Neville, Whoa. they can keep going and going and Whoa. going. Um, we, we, we have to go, but apparently you're one of the only people in the country that... that does Currently, you, yes, yes. That, that what you just explained. Yes. How are you found? Oh, okay. So, um, I'm really based in Montego Bay, but I do have a satellite office in Kingston, but I may be reached by contacting my office at 876-324-3224. Great to see you. Thank you. And Thanks for having me, Neville. And well explained. Uh, urologist, uh, Dr. Tasha Cook. All right, that wasn't 10 minutes to your health, because when we come back, we will have 10 minutes to your health. Stay with us, please. Soon come.